What is up guys? Thank you so much for being here. So today I'm talking about why I think that gear actually does matter and how the A6700 helped make a challenging wedding situation for me turn out good. Alright guys, so as you can see, the video turned out pretty decent, especially considering the challenging situation, which I'll explain in a second. They did want something chill and with that oldie style music, but mostly they just wanted me to focus on the photos as the priority, so that's what I did. But let me go ahead and get into what made this so challenging and why I legitimately couldn't have done it without a certain level of gear. Alright, let me go ahead and set the stage for this situation. So the groom, who's a buddy of mine, we went out the day before to scout for locations because this was just gonna be a very small, not even wedding, it's just what they consider like an elopement. It was gonna be a very small thing, which in that sense takes a lot of pressure off of me. So the groom and I went out to scout locations the day before and we found an awesome valley surrounded by mountains and just pine trees and a nice big flat area in that valley to be able to kind of do this small ceremony. And the only factor that we really had to consider is that it was the time of year where the sun was going down a little early in the day and we we're in a low valley surrounded by mountains. So with that, you're gonna have the sun before it even sets, it's gonna get behind those mountains and then we're not gonna be able to have any nice golden light in there because then it just becomes all shadow. Fast forward to the next day of the ceremony, groom and I get there at least probably three and a half hours before the sun was gonna be behind those mountains. And we're thinking, you know, bride's gonna be there about an hour later because that was the plan. And that would give us at least roughly two and a half hours, which is still cutting it a little tight, but whatever, it's plenty of time. So the groom and I are just kind of hanging out. Time's going by, time's going by. And before you know it, we're down to two hours. Still not there, hour and a half, still not there. I'm like, man, this is all gonna be shadowy, the golden light's gonna be gone. You know, this is just not good. <laughs> but it's all good, I'm keeping my composure because it's not on me at that point, you know? I'm just there trying to do the best I can. But I know that in photo and video, light means everything and it can just really change the mood and how kind of cinematic and epic or whatever. How cool a video can turn out um, and photos can turn out when you have that nice golden light. But they end up getting there about an hour before the sun is gonna be behind those mountains and we end up starting this ceremony probably about 45 minutes before the sun's gonna be behind those mountains. So that gives us 45 minutes to do this little ceremony, have a time afterwards to focus on photos because that was the priority and then also get a little bit of time at that point to try and focus a little bit on some video to kind of take the video from the ceremony and combine it with a little bit of b-roll afterwards um, to kind of put together some sort of a video for them. So you can imagine why at that point in time I would need every advantage possible to try and pull anything off. So if you're wondering how I did it, imagine me got my full frame camera with a 24 to 105 on there and simultaneously in my left hand I had this gimbal which is the DJI RS3 
and I had the A6700 on here, which I'm recording on right now. I had that on here with, actually with a full frame lens. It was the 24 G Master. So I had that on here taking video for 45 minutes straight. Well, actually that's not true. As the bride is walking down towards the groom, I'm focused on photography, but as well trying to get some good video shots. And then obviously during the whole ceremony, again, mostly focused on photography, trying to get different angles, kind of just using my subconscious, keep this pointed in the right direction. I knew that by having the A6700 set up on here, my footage is gonna be pretty stable because the in-body stabilization on the camera is really good, plus obviously the gimbal. Having this gear allowed me to know that for one, the A6700's autofocus is ridiculously good. So even if they're not perfectly centered in the frame, the A6700 is gonna keep in focus, you know, what's going on. And then of course I'd be able to zoom in and post because 4K is such high quality that even when zooming in on that and then kind of recentering, you know, each shot, I, I'm not really losing too much quality, at least not noticeable quality. You know, I can deliver that and people are gonna just still be blown away by how crisp and good it looked. And so even though for certain aspects of photography or videography, you're not necessarily gonna need the latest and greatest, I can definitely say that I wouldn't have been able to do something like this if I didn't have a camera like the A6700 that has amazing autofocus and the capability of shooting in high frame rates in 4K. And then luckily, since it wasn't a huge wedding, I was able to get that whole ceremony photographed with the family and with the dog and just the couple and all that. I honestly probably had less than 10 minutes, maybe even like five minutes to get a few B-roll shots at the end. And you can even see in the very last couple shots of the video, they were kind of in the shadow at that point. It was no longer that nice golden light. Because we were so crunched on time, that's why in the edit, I kind of had to make each shot slightly longer just because Typically, I would have so many more angles and compositions. I like to go wide, medium, tight, you know, from the side, from the front, all kinds of angles. And so when editing, that kind of allows me to keep the video pace a little better and just keep it more interesting because you have so many different angles and compositions. Did what we could with the time that we had. I think it worked out pretty good. And again, the focus was the photos and I did deliver 120 fully edited, high quality, nice photos for them that they can hopefully print out someday and put on their wall or do whatever they want with them. Um, they were happy with what they received and so that's all that really matters at the end of the day. I'm getting hot in this garage. I should probably take off this beanie, but we're almost done. So the point of this video wasn't to tell you guys, hey, you have to go out and just buy the new hotness, have the best gear on the market. But I did want to get a point across that depending on what you do with your cameras, there may be a situation that arises that you can't necessarily foresee where you're gonna need competent equipment to be able to deliver you know, a good product to the people that are paying you. And that sometimes is gonna be in a situation that isn't necessarily the most ideal, obviously. Just keep that in mind, and depending on what you do, just make sure that you have gear that can, I guess, step up when you have a situation that you may fear, right? Because like, I shouldn't say fear, but having 45 minutes to do all that, ceremony, photo shoot afterwards, and then some kind of B-roll to wrap it up, that wasn't ideal, but the gear got it done. So I'm just recommending getting the best that you can get for what you can afford, because you never know what the situation's gonna be and having the right tools. And also that's, that's another thing, is don't just go spending your money on whatever. Make sure you do your research and have the right tools because I did all my research, every single piece of equipment that I have, I've done my research. And that's part of why I like making these videos because it allows me to take the research I've done, apply my own research and experience with said products and then deliver my experience to you guys. And so with all that being said, I hope you appreciate it. I definitely appreciate you guys watching till the end. And if you like this, definitely hit the like button or if you got anything out of it, cause it only takes about one second to hit that like button, but it really makes a big difference for my channel. And if you like this kind of content, anything that has to do with lens reviews, camera gear, camera backpacks, anything like that, definitely subscribe. I've got a good amount of videos on my channel already and I'll be putting out a lot more in the future. So I just wanna thank you one more time for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.